I regard um, inequality as, uh, uh, as a major economic issue. We don't know exactly why uh, the U.S. has become uh, so much more unequal, or the U.K. or, or, or France, uh, in, in the last 20 years. And there are, com there are competing explanations. Um, our explanation is that uh, there has been uh, a modest increase in the dispersion of skills in, 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 in those societies. So by, by a, dis, uh, a dispersion, I mean that the, the variance of the distribution has increased a little bit, not, not a huge amount. But that modest increase in the dispersion of, of skills has led to a very significant change in the wage distribution. And that's happened because of a realignment in the way that workers are matched with one another. Uh, if, if you look at the typical American company of a generation ago, the typical manufacturing company, it would, it would be a company like General Motors or Ford uh, where Workers uh, consist both of rather high-skilled people, engineers, and rather low-skilled people, assembly line workers. And they were all working together in the same company. Um, with this increase in dispersion, we have seen a, uh, a segregation of the labor market into firms where there are essentially only high skill workers, Microsoft, Apple, Google, that kind of firm. Almost everyone is highly trained. And firms where almost all the workers have uh, very low skills, uh, McDonald's, Walmart, uh, so, so that, crudely speaking, is, is what has happened to uh, American production. That means that uh, the uh, worker working for Microsoft, the low-skill worker for Microsoft, is probably being paid less than a worker with that same skill who a generation ago might have been working for General Motors because he's being matched with other low-skill workers and, that, and that's going to inhibit his productivity. When he was working for General Motors, he was being matched with these engineers, higher productivity, higher wages. So, we, so, so some, uh, uh, this big increase in inequality has been accompanied by the segregation of the labor market into these uh, high-skill and low-skill firms, we have tested whether uh, firms have become more segregated uh, by skill. So that, that's a prediction of our theory that is not made by the other leading theories. And, and in fact, there is evidence to to back us up that, that indeed there, there is more segregation within firms. The problem of inequality and unskilled workers getting left out of the, lo, lo, uh, the uh, global labor market is not going to solve itself because uh, workers cannot afford to acquire the skills necessary to compete. They're too poor to do that. Employers don't have sufficient incentive to do the training because uh, their investments will be 
compromised by having to pay workers higher wages or losing their workers to competitors. So, so an important role the government can play is to subsidize uh, skill training and, and education uh, as, as a way of giving what I was calling the D workers, the, the, uh, the very low skill workers, the opportunity to, to, uh, to participate in the, in the global labor market. If people are trying to learn skills to perform a particular set of tasks, then it may be most efficient to subsidize the employers. Uh, that is, give them maybe a tax break if they train a worker to do those tasks. Because after all, it's the employer who has the best idea of exactly what these workers should be learning. Uh, now, as I said in the lecture, the employer might not have the incentive to do the training without the subsidy because if he, if he does the training, if, 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 um, then he has to pay the workers more than if they were untrained, so, so some of his investment is lost. But a subsidy uh, from, the, from the government, say, uh, to do the training uh, might be just, just what's needed.